Chief Elections Officer refuses to meet with parliamentary parties to discuss readiness for snap elections. Peter Ramsroop scolds pro-government media over fabricated reports about the Charanas Prasad yes vote. Two held for beating the death of quarantine carpenter. And in sport, West Indies test skipper Jason Holder returns to international cricket later this month. He's in more right now in this of a Saturday, January 12, 2019 edition of News Update. Good evening, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thanks for joining us. The Ghana Elections Commission Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield has reportedly declined to meet with party representatives in the National Assembly to say if the Commission is in a state of readiness for snap elections due by March 21, 2019. Following an agreement between President David Granger and Opposition Leader Bharat Chaglio, Opposition's Gail Tishera and the government's Amna Ali were supposed to meet with GCOM officials, but Lowenfield instead asked them to write the Commission's chairman, who is on protracted sick leave. Here is that story. The Guyana Times quoted PPPC's Gil Teixeira as saying that a meeting with Lowenfield would probably have been better since a number of technical matters would have been dealt with. However, she noted that Lowenfield referred the GCOM chairman, retired Justice James Patterson himself, on an extended medical leave. Amna Ali, who was expected to represent the government at that meeting, wrote to Justice Patterson, but according to reports, the chairman is still to respond. Ali was quoted by the state media saying that Lowenfield did not have a difficulty in meeting with them, but nevertheless, he still requested that they seek out Patterson. Patterson, who had been on sick leave after being hospitalized, was expected back at work last Tuesday to host a statutory meeting of the commission, but subsequently submitted a further medical, claiming his doctors asked that he take further rest. The 84-year-old is expected to be back at work on January 21. The successful passage of the no-confidence motion on December 21 has triggered Article 1066 of the Constitution, which clearly states that the Parliament be dissolved and the nation returns to the elections within three months. When this newscast spoke with Public Relations Officer of GCOM, Yolanda Ward, she stated that the Commission had already begun preparations for elections. However, the state of readiness is what the meeting between Ali and Tashira was expected to address. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Economist Peter Ramsroop has rubbish claimed by government media that there was collusion to get former AFC parliamentarian Charandas Persaud to vote in favor of a no-confidence motion against the government last month. Several media houses believed to be on the government's payroll, including the state-run entities, have been speculating that Ramsroop somehow had a hand in Persaud's vote. However, the former U.S. soldier-turned-economist to rubbish those claims as just fabrications. Question on whether uh, the leader of the opposition or anyone in the PPP is aware of my involvement prior to that? Absolutely not. And there are many names mentioned um, at, uh, be because of the airport issue that I went with. Uh, people have mentioned, or the Chronicle has mentioned death squads, uh, people or strong hand people, those are people that I can tell you was nowhere near in my sight or were with me or any part of my uh, uh, involvement or party at Oval Airport. And on the question of did I get an official pass? Absolutely, I've been in. Peter Ramsrup is a well known person in Guyana. Uh, I'm not taking any pat on my back. I requested a pass to go through with Mr. Tarandas through security, which we follow all protocols. My uh, pockets were checked, my phone was checked, I went through the scanner, but my job was to be part of Mr. Charon Ash and ensure his safety out of the country. And why did I ensure his safety? He was threatened in Parliament by a senior MP of the government that he will be dead that night. And as a friend, I tell you, I took that personally. I could not, in any form of my conscience, knowing that he asked me to help him with his security, not take every precaution within the law, within the best of my ability to ensure his protection, because I really believe they were serious when he, they said he will be dead that night. 
People's Progressive Party parliamentarian Juan Egil has lauded the Ethnic Relations Commission on the strides it made thus far in addressing issues of racism, social class and economic backgrounds, and the launching of its Harmony campaign. He, however, urged the Commission to nip in the bud issues that can erode unity in the country. Harris Kippany Jordan. Juan Egil congratulated the staff of the Ethnic Relations Commission for launching the Harmony campaign as it addresses so many issues with which our country is faced. Egil said moral suasion, voluntary compliance, is what we need if we want to see a change in Guyana. And as Guyanese, we must determine if we want to be a people that are miles apart or we are working towards our nation's motto where we are coming from different cultures, different religions, different worldviews, different socialization, and we have to come from all of those standpoints and come together so that we can truly be one people, one nation, and one destiny. Edgel added there is still an issue of class in Guyana that has to be addressed. He said they are in support of the ERC and the work they have been doing. Because the launching of the posters show that they are not only monitoring but investigating matters based on their own accord and reports made. He believes this is a good time for the launch of the Harmony campaign and calls on the ERC to be more diligent at this time in its work and use all platforms, especially social media, to continue to educate and inform. Meanwhile, Government Minister Dr. George Norton also congratulated the ERC for its efforts in forging harmony amongst Guyanese. Keep an Adrian reporting for MTV's News Update. Two persons are now in custody as police probe the theft of a quarantine baby's carpenter who was found lying on the quarantine highway. That is Navinja Martha Bowman, also called Altaf 21, a blood 54 number 70 village quarantine. Ghana Times reported that Bowman was beaten by two persons after he went away with a $5,000 bill they had given him to purchase a bottle of rum, which cost $1,500. The dead man's uncle, Mohammed Safraz Nordin, was quoted by newspapers saying he was approached and told of the transaction. According to Nordin, he was visited by a villager who is commonly called Two Feet, who related to him that Bowman went away with $5,000, which he and another had given him to purchase rum. The man related that a few minutes later he received information his nephew was lying on the ground. The injured man was picked up by his uncle and rushed to the Skeleton Hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Meanwhile, an investigation was launched into a young man's death. Police acting on information received went to a house at Farish, some 35 miles away from where the incident occurred, and arrested two men. Also on Farish, a woman was questioned by police and reportedly told investigators that two feet and another known as Arif had gone to her house for refuge, claiming they had beaten a man but could not say if he was dead. The two suspects is in police cooperating with the investigators. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bel Air Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated, we are your source for security.
Welcome back. You're watching MTV's News Update. Another small political party has come out on the landscape, this time formed by three attorneys, is the Federal United Party proposing to have the country divided into three large regions. Here are the details. With Guyanese preparing to head back to the polls in March for snap elections, new small political parties are emerging. The Federal United Party was launched yesterday at the Central Quarantine Chambers of Commerce in Berbies. The party is fronted by attorneys Chandra Sohan, Ryan Crawford and Horatio Edmondson. The attorneys have touted the history of racial tension in the country as the main factor for the deteriorating economy. The party is proposing to divide the country into three regions with each having its own administration. And that is where we now we want to advocate the federal system. The federal system means just dividing this country into three counties and each county be able to have their own administration. That is nothing new to us as well, because we have the regional system. All we're doing now or talking about is merge the regions into bigger regions, and those regions will eventually become the three counties of Obis, where we can have a different level of government, similar to what we have in the regional system. But yet, the objective now is to take away the power or the control of central government as we have today. A number of persons have signaled the formation of small political parties ahead of the 2019 snap elections. Pushing the agenda for inclusive governance is New United Guyana, with former Speaker of the National Assembly Ralph Ramkaran, former Minister under the PPP and PNC Dr. Henry Jeffrey, and Attorney at Law Timothy Jonas. Former Chairman of the National Tushals Council Lennox Schumann will also be launching a new political party. Earlier in the year, Craig Sylvester and Ramon Gaskin launched the Democratic National Congress and Guyana First respectively, but these two political parties so far only have presidential candidates with no other members. Citizens should not be worried as Guyana will not be recognizing any sort of remapping of its border by the Venezuelans, assured Foreign Affairs Minister Carl Greenwich. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich has assured citizens they have nothing to worry about in response to Venezuela remapping land ownership. The Bolivarian Republic is expected to conduct a seismic survey in the coming months, which will include eastern areas that borders Guyana. In a release from the Department of Public Information, Greenwich says any mapping from the country will be deemed illegal. Venezuela is looking to remap to show ownership of lands and maritime boundaries owned by Guyana according to the 1899 Arbitral Award. The foreign minister said all parties would have to agree for a remapping to be valid and recognized. Already, the opposition People's Progressive Party has signaled its strong support to protect Guyana's territorial integrity. But Guyana already made its position clear that it would not have a remapping process considered. Venezuela reignited the old border dispute last month after intercepting two ships conducting seismic studies from ExxonMobil. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has summoned the Canadian High Commission to explain allegations and certain breaches of protocol by one of its diplomats. Here are those details. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has confirmed that it has formally approached the Canadian High Commission in Georgetown. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Carl Greenwich, will be seeking an explanation on certain breaches of protocol by one of its diplomats. It was claimed that the diplomat breached protocol when he excorted ex-parliamentarian Charandas Prasad to a flight on December 21, 2018. The now expelled parliamentarian left on a late flight to Barbados the following day, hours after he voted in favour of the opposition-sponsored confidence motion. The ministry in a statement said the two parties were engaged on Monday and subsequently Wednesday and Friday. The process is ongoing and the ministry is working with the Canadian High Commission to ensure that the matter reaches a satisfactory conclusion. The ministry made it clear that it is duty bound to seek clarification on reports of breaches of diplomatic protocol by a foreign mission. The main city council of Georgetown is yet to decide on whether or not they will renew the contracts of Savon Waste Management and Poor and Brothers Disposal Inc. In November last year, the MNCC hired several small contractors for garbage collection after Savons and Poorans withdrew their services over millions owed to them. Here's Kipani Jordan. That council have made a decision where they are seeking a second opinion. Once we would have gotten that second opinion, council will make a determination on the way forward. Acting Town Clerk Sharon Harry addressing media operatives at the mayor's meet and greet on Friday, January 11. 
Previously, the Mayan City Councilors of Georgetown contracted five small contractors for garbage disposal due to the financial constraints of the council, which caused them to be indebted to two companies, Sivon's Waste Management and Puran Brothers Disposal, Inc. Solid waste disposal for the council attracts some $39 million per week each month per contractor. Kippany Jordan, reporting for MTV's News Update. We now join Kippany Jordan with tips for healthy living. It's cherry season again. They're fresh, plentiful, beautiful, and delicious. But you may be wondering, are cherries actually that good for you? The answer is yes. 100 times yes. Cherries are not only one of the healthiest fruits, they also rank as one of the most health protective fruits overall. One cup or about 21 cherries contains less than 100 calories and 15% of your daily vitamin C needs. But here are just a few reasons why this stone fruit is a nutritional all-star and easy ways to eat more cherries year round. Cherries are full of antioxidants. Cherries are a potent source of antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds. These cellular bodyguards slow down aging and ward off chronic illnesses including heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, and obesity. They promote healthy sleep. Tart cherries, in particular, are one of the few food sources of melatonin, a hormone that helps control your sleep-wake cycles. And finally, they curb cholesterol. Research has shown that drinking tart cherry juice can help lower total cholesterol, including the bad type known as LDL. Peace on windows and doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 622-6943. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation.
Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. Jason Hood has announced his return for West Indies this month when the Carbon Unit meets England in the first of three tests, which comes as a big boost for the host ahead of a big series. Hood missed West Indies tour of Bangladesh late last year after he sustained a shoulder injury in India. He returned to competitive cricket last week, playing for Barbados in the first last match in which he scored 41 and 1. Hood has said he's feeling strong again and is looking to forward to playing against England at home, adding that he had a full month at rehab and his body is feeling great. West Indies holds England for three tests, five ODIs and three T20s. The series gets underway at Bridgeton on January 23, with the touring team playing a couple of two-day warm-up matches against a West Indies sport. And we tell you now that England's 2019 cricket journey, according to England and Wales Cricket Board, believed to represent a once-in-a-generation opportunity with the upcoming tour of the West Indies. With both the World Cup, a tournament the English male team have never won and ashes on home soil, it will be a challenge for England's leading cricketers in both the one-day and tests format to maintain their focus on the challenge in front of them rather than be distracted by the bigger prizes ahead. A three-day test tour and five-match one-day series in the Caribbean, which gets underway with a warm-up fixture against the Windies Board 11 in Barbados next week, should provide a good barometer for England's progress. By contrast, the West Indies are currently eighth in the test table and ninth in the ODI list. While England can be expected to deploy a normal quantity of pace in the first test in Barbados, they might opt for three spinners on the slower pitches of Antigua and St. Lucia, just as they did in Sri Lanka before Christmas. The five ODI series against West Indies will be followed by three T20Is for which England have yet to name a squad. They then face Ireland in a one-off game in Dublin, followed by five ODIs against Pakistan to kick off the home season before the start of the World Cup on May 30. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MTV's Sports Update. The Ghana Football Federation on Monday last presented footballs to aid the execution of small goal competitions slated for the University of Guyana. The initiative organized by Jafar Gibbons will kick off on February 2 at the University of Ghana campus and is designed to boost the students' interaction across faculty, which is expected once students are given the opportunity to create their own teams. With the aim of fostering student interaction at the University of Guyana, one student has planned a football tournament with a twist. The tournament will be round robin, followed by the knockout stage, which will basically be three games, two semifinals and the final. With all things being equal, Guyana Football Federation's National Training Centre at Providence is expected to be completed by 2020. According to President Wayne Ford, who shared an update on the multi-million dollar facility's progress. When completed, this will be the nation's first state-of-the-art football facility and will be the focal point for football activities at all levels of the game. It will, once properly managed and utilized, play a pivotal role in elevating the standard of Guyana's football as it will cater for male and female development. The venue will be equipped with female amenities to encourage greater participation and will house the headquarters of the Guyana Football Federation. Barring any obstacles or unforeseen delays, the keys will be handed over in 2020. Ford feels very confident they can complete Phase 2, but to be able to hand over the key and be able to say they are finished, it is very likely they are going to find themselves in 2020, because they are trying to build a top-class facility. Ford further explained what has to be in place to ensure that FIFA certification. In order to achieve FIFA certification, they have to do some work to accommodate the dugout on the eastern side of the field. The actual work they would be doing at the facility for 2019 will be the lighting. They are looking at seating and dorms and will go from there. They are going to be investing a fair amount in that facility over the next couple of months. Chelsea Griffith, reporter for MTV Sports Update. Stay with us, more news after the break. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. 
Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sales service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. Chief Elections Officer refuses to meet with parliamentary parties to discuss readiness for snap elections. Peter Armstrong scolds pro-government media over fabricated reports about the Chandas pursuit yes vote. Two held for beating to death of quarantine carpenter. And in sport, West Indies test skipper Jason Holder returns to international cricket later this month. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sandy Ramutar. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.